with multiple engines in it, ones that know how to uh, monitor Bluetooth networks, ones that know how to turn on the webcam and record things, ones that know how to turn on the mic and record things, all very modular. Not only that, but written in the Lua scripting language. Nobody's ever seen malware written in a scripting language before. And it's got even more. So they put two and two together. There's some hints of the same code that was in Stuxnet in Flame, and people believe it's part of the same program. U.S. and I, uh, Israel collaborating in a program the New York Times said was started before Obama took office by Bush to sabotage the Iranian nuclear program, enrichment program. And Iran admits that they destroyed two to 3,000 centrifuges, that flame was probably part of an uh, espionage, intelligence gathering, as part of the Stuxnet program to figure out what was going in, so on inside of these networks so that they could then develop Stuxnet. So by recording what the scientists were doing, by watching them, they could gather intel to help with targeting their cyber weapon called Stuxnet. And what I've just launched is Flame inside of this VM. And there's ccalc.sys, 32.sys. Let's go back to process it, monitor. And at this point, and by the way, there's a couple of things that are noteworthy about Flame. One is it's afraid of Process Explorer. If I had Process Explorer running, and which is why I didn't have it running, Pro Flame would go away and hide and not activate. So, and it's actually rumored that it's the CIA that created Flame, so yeah, CIA, there you go. <laughs> the other interesting thing is it took me a while to figure out how to activate this thing once I had the sample until I figured out, huh, maybe I need to, to make it feel like it's at home. <laughs> and seriously, that is required to make Flame activate. And then, so let's go take a look at um, Flame, what Flame is writing. So it's dropping here mscrypt.dat into MS Security Manager, this massive payload down here, which happens to be a SQL Express database. How many pieces of malware have you seen that use T-SQL to store configuration. And we'll also see it drop MS, uh, the messenger.ocx file and cccalc.sys, a few different parts of its payload. It also has an auto activation point that doesn't show up in MS config. But you can find it in the process monitor trace, you can also see it in auto runs, but I'm going to just find it. Because what it does is put, places itself in a very sneaky part of the system. By the way, it was also afraid to zoom it, which is why I don't have zoom it running in there. It's red set value, HK local machine, system current control set control, LSA authentication packages. And here it is pointing at MS, there's the payload that we saw that I launched, the OCX file, and this is how it launches every time the system boots a place that almost no other anti-auto uh, start location scanning tools will even bother to look at, but auto runs does look at that location. So that is using the sysinternals tools to look at malware. And I want to spend just a couple minutes here wrapping up with a view of my state of malware these days, because what I see are, are two kind of extremes of malware. There's the junk crap that we were looking at earlier in the presentation that is Hey, it's just hanging out there wide open. No strings, no company, uh, no company name, no description, no icon. Packed, show up like with flashing red lights in Process Explorer because they can. On the other end of the spectrum, we've got this kind of stuff like Flame, which is getting more and more sophisticated. And it's just going to get harder and harder because what we have is a trickle-down cyber weapons thing going on where something like Stuxnet comes out, the virus and the, the malware guys see techniques being developed by China and the US, big funded kind of or, uh, organizations, and they'll adopt the same techniques themselves to stay on a system and hidden. So it's going to get harder. The goal, too, is to prevent, which has always been the malware from getting on your system, but also to detect it. There's a new philosophy now we've got in the, the world of cybersecurity, which is assumed breach. 
you will get breached. Every one of you will get breached. Uh, FBI Director Robert Mueller said at the RSA conference two years ago, there's two types of companies, those that have been hacked and those that don't know they've been hacked. So, and by the way, I, now that the official time is over, some of you might know that I've written a couple of cyber thrillers, cyber security thrillers. I thought I'd share one. It's called Zero Day. Has anybody read Zero Day? That's good to see. And then I've got a sequel to it that I came out with a few months ago. It actually talks about Stuxnet because it, Stuxnet happened right as I was in the middle of writing this plot. And I just want to show you really quickly a, a trailer that will that I made. And uh, Took me forever to make my voice sound like that, by the way. But there's, there's one thing that I'm especially proud of. I don't know if you noticed, but the foreword was written by Kevin Mitnick. And a lot of you probably know who Kevin Mitnick is. He's the, one of the most notorious hackers ever. What amazed me, and I didn't even realize it until afterwards, is that I got him to open a document called Trojan Horse. And that... <laughs> anyway, I'm doing a book signing from 12 to 12.30 of all the books, Sys Internals, Windows Internals, Zero Day, and Trojan Horse, uh, from 12 to 12.30. And I'll be back here in the same room at 1 o'clock for Casey the Unexplained. I hope to see you there. I hope you had a great time and learned something and complete malware off your system. Thanks.